Hello everyone and welcome back to Saturn Mission Testing and Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. In the previous video I had launched the two NTP tanks for the Saturn mission with the Fuji stage which is the big part there and it's just hanging out in low earth orbit for now waiting for the other pieces to be launched. So the next bit was to launch the power section which is mainly actually a liquid oxygen tank for the ion engines uh, but also including the ion engines and the nuclear thermal rocket engine and the reactor and generator for the ion engines. So all in a tight package, a uh, very heavy tight package being launched on the Kasei rocket with five boosters as the other bits of the mission will also be. Uh, just a reminder, the boosters are methane oxygen boosters, the core is all hydrogen oxygen, and then we have the Fuji upper stage, well, Fuji third stage in this case, well, depends how you count it, but that's a nuclear stage. And I had gotten permission from my Twitch live stream in order to use the nuclear stage to complete orbit, that can be controversial after all, but... We need a lot of time to do that with the Fuji stage and I constantly in multiple attempts to launch this uh, did not allow for enough time for it to actually safely make orbit. Here we're at 300 kilometers which is nice but I haven't allowed any time to apoapsis. since we're actually already going down and it takes some time for this stage to spool up. The problem was the higher I tried to toss it the less horizontal velocity we already had and therefore the more work the Fuji stage had to do and the more time it needed. So it's a trade-off, you know, you try to toss it higher to give it more time, but then it needs even more time in order to finish up. So for the first time in like a decade or something close to a decade, maybe eight years, I decided to try out Mechjeb's Ascent Guidance. It has changed a lot in that time. It wasn't this complicated before, it didn't have all these options. It had fewer options, and I got a lot of help from my Twitch audience in setting it up, uh, though they systematically neglected to tell me things, leading to disasters along the way. But uh, finally, uh, I got it set up right for what I wanted it to do. And so here is the launch after all the mishaps with Ascent Guidance. So there were a few mishaps with Ascent Guidance. Uh, but this time it ultimately will get us to orbit and do everything properly. One of the problems was the fairing staging which is coming up after the first stage ends. Uh, that has to be done after the first stage ends, not at a particular altitude, so I had to set that. So now fairings and then the first stage separation and ignition of the second stage. Now I had uh, told it to go to 240 by 240 and I had also set an attach altitude. It turns out that setting an attach altitude is not the right thing to do in this case. Uh, that's mainly for shuttles uh, for the insertion altitude because it keeps going up after that. We don't need that here. So I had set the attach altitude to 240 as well, so 240, 240, 240. What ended up happening was it was too focused on 240 kilometers and sticking at 240 kilometers and didn't give itself enough leeway. So realizing that ultimately I set it to 200 kilometers and you see it's already pitching up quite a lot like close to 70 degrees but once I set it to 200 kilometers it's not trying to get to 240 kilometers anymore. It, can, it knows that it can go to 200 kilometers and just circularize there. So there was a lot of energy wasted trying to get up there like that when we didn't really need to go to 240. It didn't really understand that and in the next attempt with Ascent Guidance, I'm not going to use Ascent Guidance much, it's just for these really long upper stages that need to complete orbit and the fact that they have to be lofted up. Uh, I'll, I'll not use the attach altitude on the next attempt and then that's fine. Also having a gap between the periapsis and apoapsis seems like a better idea, not having them be the same. So on the next launch, which is the crew module, I'll set 200 for the periapsis and 240 for the apoapsis and that works better. Ultimately I decided to see what would happen if I turn off the attach altitude because it was still trying to go up to 210 now 
and also uh, press the thing that says do not press which is reset and that was because James Studios had been telling me in chat to press reset it turns out that time I shouldn't have pressed reset but along the whole launch I've been pressing reset quite a lot uh, at GM Studios' bidding and those times nothing actually happened. This time something happened. Anyway, so I completed orbit manually and that was fine and we got to orbit with a decent amount of Delta V to give us a boost but probably not as much as I should have had. Uh, but we can't really use more than 3,000 really. And so this about 2,400 is what we're looking for. I first plot to Saturn and then cut that down to the amount of Delta V that we have and then boost it up to there. So this power section we boosted up first because it's the heaviest part, I think. and Or it's the one that lacks the most Delta V because we had the weird trajectory. And then the crew module and the extra NTP tanks will rendezvous with this at the high orbit and that's the plan. So we've got this 2400 meter per second boost and then after that we still need another 5300, 5400-ish. 5, and that will be provided by the nuclear engines and then the ions. You can see the radiation belts, we are passing through them. It'll be up to Kerbalism to decide how bad the Kerbals have it uh, with those radiation belts, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, I switch back to the tanks and boost them up to match the orbit of the power section for rendezvous. And this has plenty of delta B for that. Maybe we should have tossed on another tank, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, there it goes. And it handles the bulk of the rendezvous. And I sort of made a hash of it, so I ended up using more delta V than I intended with this whole business. But anyway, there's the approach high above the earth. We'll ultimately have a flock of these Fuji stages just sort of hanging out. I should have put docking ports on the top of them. Uh, but anyway, this is just a test of the mission. One of the things that I haven't really dealt with in this test of the mission is the need for artificial gravity and spinning it around. It's not long enough to spin for adequate artificial gravity. Uh, so the ultimate Saturn mission will probably have to be longer just to be able to generate the artificial gravity and in that case we also probably want the ion engines to be center mounted rather than tail mounted so that while it's spinning to generate artificial gravity they can use the ion engines to adjust things and you know do a more continuous burn with them remember the duration of the ion engines is 48 days anyway this is the launch of the crew obviously we've got the crew down there, the same crew that uh, handled my experiments in the previous video. And they're in what I call the Marshmallow Hab, which is an 8.4 meter diameter habitat. And so it's sort of the same form factor as SLS. You could sort of think of it as the extended version of one of the SLS tanks, and basically we're using that as the structure of the thing. Though mass-wise, it's probably better to just think of it as an inflatable. That would probably be a better idea. Anyway, as the boosters go, again, I'm using ascent guidance, but without the attach altitude and with the periapsis and apoapsis different. And this time it won't pitch up wildly like it did on the previous attempt, and it'll also make orbit more properly. To be honest, during the live stream, I didn't think it was pitching up nearly enough through all of this, and I thought I wasn't leaving enough time to apoapsis for the Fuji stage to do its part, but it turns out that it was being very efficient after all, and much more efficient than I probably would have been myself. But still, in the future, I'll probably be using my KOS script for most things, not ascent guidance, uh, but maybe for special purposes, I'll bring out ascent guidance. I'm not as averse to it. It's just sort of a messy dialogue. <laughs> it's, it's a big box and actually uh, with my screen resolution, if I actually expand all the windows, the options as well, I can't actually reach everything. So yeah, a little bit of a flaw there. Anyway, I handled the rendezvous with the crude section, the habitat section, with all the food and water and oxygen that we will need, hopefully, assuming that I haven't miscalculated that or Kerbalism hasn't lied about anything. And I rendezvous with the wrong bit. Uh, that's actually the spent Fuji stage, not the tanks plus power section. And I didn't realize that in time during the live stream, 
I separated off the Fuji stage from this and then realized that technically I didn't need to worry about that because adjusting the rendezvous to the other vessel uh, did not take much delta V. It was like two, three meters per second only. But I decided to revert and I did this bit off stream now. So I did use the Fuji stage attached to the habitat to do the rendezvous. It was still only a few meters per second to adjust the orbit. I, and that was mainly because I was waiting till the other side of our orbit to do the rendezvous so we could be leisurely and then separate it. But actually the habitat itself has some delta V to use in order to make a rendezvous like this with just a few meters per second like that. So I backed this spent Fuji stage away from it. It's not fully spent. It has plenty of Delta V actually to get back down to a low earth orbit and get refueled. I forgot to put the docking port on it though. Maybe we could send a Kerbal to put a docking port. If I was doing a full deal here, uh, instead of just testing this mission out, I would probably do that. Uh, the Fuji stage was always meant to be reusable. Anyway, here I'm docking the bits together. unfortunately in the dark, with a couple of Fuji stages hanging out nearby. And there we go. So, the mission is all together. I have a fair amount of Delta V here, but I don't know if it's enough, given the way the ion engines work over a long period of time and aren't exactly accurate because they're not burning right at the maneuver node. And we are planning to refuel this at Saturn, which means I have to also launch another Enceladus refueler vessel, and also probably a Titan lander. So more things need to be launched, but this is all set up for its transfer, and I'll probably do the transfer first and then do the other launches because we have some time till the actual transfer window. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.